Cupid's arrow has been fired. And it's landed in an unexpected target. The rumours were right, and we were very wrong. But is there any future in Hunsuki? And could they not come up with a better name? I'm Alex. I'm Rob. And this is the Wolford Weekly Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to Wolford Weekly, your weekly EastEnders podcast where this week we'll be discussing the episodes released on the BBC in the UK from Monday the 30th of August to Friday the 3rd of September. And he's back and he means it this time. He is Rob. Hello Rob. Hello. How are you? How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you Alex. How are you today? I'm very good. I'm very, very good. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but lots of stuff has happened in Wolford this week. So I feel like we shouldn't dilly-dally around too much. Go straight to the crux. Is that what you're suggesting this week? We'll get to the crux of the matter. But before we do get to that big crux, uh, what I would like to do is a quick shout out to our Patreons who have been supporting us for the last couple of months um, and throwing uh, a little bit of their change our way but, uh, with their support on our Patreon channel. Uh, I just wanted you guys to know that we don't put anything behind a paywall. All of our shows that we've always released as free are still free. We may release some videos a little bit earlier on Patreon, uh, but as it stands, our Patreon is just a support network for people who want to give us a hand and can actually get involved by having their name at the end of the episode as well. So look out for your name as well if you do support us. But if you would like to support us and you don't already, head to patreon.com slash Weekly and just go to our one tier, which is £2.50, and it will really help us out because it means we can pay for this fantastic video, this wonderful background of white, uh, Rob's beautiful background of blue and Neptune. under the sea magic. Neptune. Yep, yep, Neptune. Uh, he's getting, he's, he has promised me he's going to be the Little Mermaid for Halloween, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, we can, we can very much we can very much appreciate it if when you do get involved but as i say there's so much for us to talk about this week rob so i just want to jump straight in we are starting with gray laura chelsea and wit because wit's been sniffing around gray again but not before gray got himself fired i say fired he got he basically was sacked on the spot by laura who's been suspecting that he's been up to mischief for a very very long time now There's Mm. been a few people online who I think is a bit nuts who are saying that it was not fair that Laura sacked Grey and that just because she suspected that Grey had done something, even though we all know that he did, that she had no grounds to sack him. So is that something we should be concerned about? Should Grey have been given some justice this week? I mean, no, because, well, to be fair, we forgot why, because last week we were, say, we were saying, why? Why has he been suspended? What did he do? And then we completely forgot about the fact that they had that whole thing where him and Chelsea were, well, what we, we couldn't decide what they were doing in the car, but they, they were caught sort of exposing themselves in public, weren't they? Um, and that's why he got suspended, and Laura has basically just used that as the perfect excuse to uh, fire him from the company altogether. Now, uh, we cannot go any further with this discussion without... Uh, talking about Laura, who has reached, uh, she's quite popular, I think. I think the social community has, the social media community has rather jumped on Laura and realised that she is fabulous, um, biscuit eating queen. She's a I queen. She, I, well, biscuit eating <laughs> queen, I think I saw on social media. She's fabulous. I like her a lot. It's a shame that she's probably going to be dead soon, let's be fair. She's got grey victim written all over her forehead, really, isn't she? Um, but it's a shame because I'd quite like her oh, to be no, a, a new you... semi-regular and take on Richie in court. I think she'd be Same. ace. Imagine her Same. versus Richie. I'd That's love what it. I was thinking mm. too. Yeah, a competitive side between her and Richie. Um, I, I mean, the actress uh, Sarah Paul has played it very, very well. She's pulled out of the bag. It's been outstanding the way she's done it. And the way that she's taken on the viewer's heart so quickly as well um, has just been terrific. I mean... It's, mm. Yeah, like you say, I'd love to see her and Richie have a battle. Um, I, I mean, who do you think she... I mean, who could she support? Could she be with Sharon? Could she look after Sharon when... Because obviously we've got the storyline later on where Sharon's kind of told the truth about Boat Week. Uh, and, uh, you know, <laughs> do you think there is more longevity for her? Um, because I personally would hate oh, I think to there think is, that yeah. she does get killed off by Grey. Hmm. 
Yeah, I, I, I'd love her to come back. <clears throat> I think she's, uh, yeah, she's got a lot of uh, sort of potential and sass about her. And it'd be nice to have, I like those sorts of characters that you love seeing, but they're not there all the time, you know. Now, you know, it's like, oh, Laura's back this week, how exciting. Um, so I think she's got that sort of, that level of, um, that level of brief iconicness about her. So I, it'd be a shame, to, it'd be a shame if she, if she um, is, becomes a victim, but... I I suspect that she is probably Grey's next victim. I don't know quite how it's going to happen, but she, I mean, no one eats Grey's biscuits and gets away with it, I feel. So, uh, <laughs> I, don't know I know she was so Let's sassy when she just grabbed a biscuit, so sassy. stood in the doorway, so snapped sassy. it in her mouth. Like it was a Kit Kat, wasn't it? Or was, uh, it, was, it, was it a bourbon? I mean, I don't, I don't it really know. Matters what biscuit something it was, but my goodness. That's a cream. Something up, something up market. <laughs> like a Venice A Waitrose squashed fly biscuit. Yeah, squash fly <laughs> biscuit. Squash fly biscuit. Mm. You know a squash fly biscuit. I've never They're heard the biscuits of the squash that are like flat biscuit. with the um. But the ones with the raisins inside of them—they're very tasty. They're like oh, what no, your granny used to give you. They used to always be at the. They used to be always be at the bottom of the biscuit barrel, but they used to always be my favourite. I've never heard of them referred to as squashed fly. <laughs> that must be a um, thing. We should also mention that Laura had brought up that she knew it was Grey who had sent her the messages on social media. So his secret mm. secret new window account that he's got on Twitter and Instagram isn't so secret after all. Um, and that she said she would use that against him if he did take it to a tribunal. Do you reckon he just forgot to make an alternative account? He might have just forgot. <laughs> yeah, just well, thought, that's what I wondered. Yeah. yeah. Because there isn't really a huge amount of evidence to suggest that it was Grey, really. Uh, unless he literally <laughs> forgot to sign out of his actual account. <laughs> Like I don't, I'm not quite sure how she, how 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 she worked that out. So it, it was there's a little bit of that going on this week. It's what you sort of called putting two point four and two point five together to make five. You know, sort of pulling these random bits of information out <laughs> with it. You don't really have that much access to, but coming up with the perfect conclusion. But yeah, he um altogether. I, I mean, to be fair, that in itself was probably grounds to sack him. You know, sort of online abuse and stalking oh, yeah. and all of that sort of thing. So I don't think so. Anybody that says that Gray was shouldn't have been sacked you're mad quite frankly you've lost you've lost you've lost it you're mad completely you're completely <laughs> nutty mad. yeah <laughs> nutty on a topic bar um yes. so yeah i think she called her bluff there to be honest with you she kind of said oh i know it was you online and gray didn't do a very good job at hiding it did he you know you saw his the sweat pouring from his face and he was like no. who me <laughs> like you know so i think he did a bad job it. there no. but then he tried to he tried to curve it around, though, because he got, with his frustration, he then decided to lie to Shirley this week, which is what I just alluded to just now, because he told Shirley that he saw Tina getting bundled onto a London bus Why? quite locally, uh, and she looked a bit frightened. But this is what I was going to ask you. Why did Grey decide to, to tell this lie to Shirley? So, someone who I have no him this idea. Whole time. I don't get it. I don't get what his plan was at all this week. The only thing I, the only kind of thing I could possibly think of was didn't even come to me until Friday's episode where it was implied that Shirley was, um, Shirley said that she, uh, you know, she's in trouble. She had two blokes after her. So unless his plan was to make them think that these two random blokes have killed Tina off, but they didn't like, but that was sort of like a throwaway line at the end of the week. And then up to then I was just like, what is he doing? They've stopped looking. (laughs) <laughs> you know, there's nothing to sort of bring him into this whatsoever. So why is it, why is he doing this? So unless that's literally the only reason, but I, it wasn't entirely clear to me. I don't know why he was doing it at all. Yeah, it's weird. Well, I wonder what gain he could get out of telling Shirley this lie. Because no they kind idea. of just said it for no reason. I mean, I think we kind of, they say things for a reason. And that has been kind of like a, uh, a constant with the show. Uh, currently and it just feels like there's something there there must be a reason why he brought that up to Shirley could it be I don't know could it be they just wanted a bit of comfort he just wanted to like almost show support to the Carters his way of kind of getting them on his side could it be financial what would you know is, is could there be any reason for that he wants to do it well I thought he was going to try and fist up Laura for some, for some or something you know because he started because that was literally after She'd nicked his biscuit, and like he then stormed into the vic and was having a drink, and then told <laughs> and then told Shirley what was going on, giving Shirley what? a really random duff duff on on Monday, like Shirley's first duff duff in about. I'm really worried years. about. So, I'm really worried <clears throat> about you, Rob, because I'm thinking what? that if anyone ever stole, you brought this biscuit thing up more than anything else You'd so far in the story. If anyone You'd stole a biscuit from you, <laughs> You'd be dead. <laughs> I know what I know what to get you for Christmas. I'm going to get you a nice biscuits. Fox's variety box of biscuits. Yes, with one flies. missing, and I'm just going to guess which one. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't yum, suggest yum. it, Alex. So, you, you wouldn't be well after doing it. It's, not, it's, it's bad for health and safety if you do things like that. I'll send you evil social media messages as well. Um, Sharon On your own got account. persuaded by Shirley this week. Yeah, Sharon got persuaded this week by Shirley to confess uh, because Shirley and Mick believed that if they had, if the police had a confession, then it would get to Tina and Tina could finally come home and she'll be all safe and sound and then the family will be back together again in the Vic. Uh, Sharon was pers- almost convinced by Phil not to do it. Uh, because Phil was like, no, no, grass, I don't want to go to prison. Although we all know that Phil's not going to end up going to prison because he always lose prison one way or another. Although it's pantomime season mm. very soon. So. It is. You know, yeah, that's Fadden, true. you know, he likes that. He likes that. Those royalty. Although it's the, are the pantomimes uh, this year? So, well, I should hope so because there wasn't any last year, wasn't there? So you think they kind of. Yeah, because you can go to theatres again now and you can go see cinema. See cinema. <laughs> Just the general world of cinema. See cinema. <laughs> to sit in the cinema and watch things. Cinema. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, uh, Zach kind of convinced, uh, Shirley, um, Sharon this week as well, um, with some words of advice because he said to her that, you know, it's, 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 it's taking care. It's taking responsibility of something you've done. Because again, we'll talk about Zach and Nancy's story a little later on because he took responsibility. But do, do you think Sharon did the right thing confessing to the crime? Because it wasn't 100% her well, I mean, fault, so she has put some of the blame on on. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, this is one of those sorts of examples where, you know, Sharon will do something wrong, but then eventually Sharon will sort of realise that she's done wrong and will do the right thing. She still threw another line in this week saying that Ian completely deserved everything that she did to him. So she hasn't learned exactly every single lesson there was to learn from this whole experience. <laughs> But, no. you know, that's no. that's just going to be up in the air forever now, isn't it? Um, but I'm glad that she um, sort of went to the police and told... Uh, well, I don't, I don't, it depends. we don't know whether she's admitted so much of her own involvement, but if she's silly, if she hasn't, because Phil will automatically say, well, it was her, it wasn't me, I had nothing to do with it. So it's it's interesting. I'm I'm sort of intrigued as to where it's going to go. It's sort of, it does sort of rear the head of Phil and Sharon probably getting back together after after all of this because this is the sort this is like their no. foreplay. This is like their foreplay. They do this sort of thing all the time. They um I will steal they, your biscuit, Rob. Don't blame it on me. I don't write it. Don't you leave my biscuits alone, <laughs> you biscuit stealing Anyway, um <laughs> Naughty word almost came out then, Alex. Let's see what you bring me to. Um yes, so I, I think it's gonna be um Oh, well, like, because that was the duff duff on Friday. The sort of the big cliffhanger of the week was, you know, the police uh, walking into the pub uh, and arresting Phil for the attempted murder of Ian Beale. Now, Tina apparently now is completely in the clear. Shirley, again, so, Shirley had a week where she was just swiping people's duff duffs. You know, you thought that the ideal duff duff there would have been Phil realizing that he was about to be arrested, but then Shirley almost pops into it, almost photobombed. Now Tina can come back. Um, so that was, that, that was, that was sort of Shirley's <laughs> role this week. Um, but yeah, apparently, you know, now Tina has been cleared completely. So again, this is going to now open the floodgates for Grey with the Carters now expecting Tina to come back. So I really don't understand what his plan is at all. I don't get what well, he's doing. This is the question then. Rob, is Tina dead? Because we're going to find out now, aren't we? We're going to find out no, in a week or so. We have to because they—they they are. They seem to be wrapping up this is. story. Is Tina dead? You don't think she is? I still don't think she is. But then, at the same time, I feel like if she isn't, then I mean, what we don't know what Gray did with the body. You know, after he subwayed her, he the burrito put her in the boot of the car. Yes, he put her in the boot of the car and then drove away, and we never found out what he did with did with her now you know Chantel we saw dishwashered quite you know no doubt about it Chantel is a goner Kush we saw sub- we saw underground did um, you know sliced in half with an underground train <laughs> again no doubt at all unfortunately the Kush is dead but there is in my mind still a massive amount of doubt the team is dead and I am fully I wouldn't I'm less expecting it than I was but I'm still I still think that there is more than enough potential for her to just suddenly turn up but I'm wondering if she maybe isn't tied up in a shed somewhere. I'm wondering whether he sort of told her to run away and never return to Walford. But then again, I don't get what he—I don't get what he's doing here at all. Um, so, who knows? What do you think? Do you think she's dead? Who no. knows? I mean, my heart thinks that Tina is alive. My head thinks that Tina has died. My heart alive, head died. I'm afraid it's a bit <laughs> like a. It's a bit. It's a bit like you know Henry VIII and his wives. That's how I feel. Tina is. Um, 
But a quick shout out to what you said about Ben calling out Phil this week, saying that you were the one who killed uh, Dennis, not Ian. You were the one to blame. I literally screamed and clapped when Mm. he said that. Not often we're seeing Ben, but go Ben. Yes, Ben. Oh, go Ben. 100% Mm. well said. Damn right. Totally. Totally. Too blooming right. Uh... (laughs) Let's move on quickly. <laughs> so I just I get so wound Chill, up. Chill, Alex. Uh, now you, that's how I'd be about the biscuits. Just warning you. Just warning you now. That that <laughs> elevation you felt then times ten. Yes. Cat and Tommy this week. So Tommy is still pushing his mum to get uh, Scarlet home. He wants Scarlet because he still he feels that Scarlet's not safe. We talked about this last week. We said there's no real evidence to prove that Scarlet's not in a safe environment. Yes, yeah, she's been moved from one house foster house to another to another another. But Cat went to the foster house. We didn't see any of it on screen. We didn't see like them all stood at the door with those cigarettes going, "Oh, hello, Scarlet. Welcome home. Nice of you to turn up," or anything like that. We just we're under the impression that Scarlet is very safe, and I don't think Cat is in the habit of lying to her own son about that. Ha. Having said that, she Although, is lying to her own son. About her about own father. Who, yeah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, she, exactly. maybe she would. Exactly. Maybe she would. Yeah. So Tommy spoke to Martin this week about it. And Martin said he would have a word to Kat. Because he wants to find Shane Ritchie. He wants to find his dad. Well, he He's believes the only one that dad. does. Uh, well, I know. I mean, I don't think there's any danger of um, his dad turning up again. Um, let's be honest with you. Um, but either one of them. Do you not? <laughs> uh, do you not? I mean, in terms of story, Alfie... it would sort of be the time for him to come back because you know when he remember when he left, him and Phil had this big old thing of you know Phil, you know the money that went missing and then wasn't mentioned for about a year and then was brought up again. There was <laughs> that whole true. thing, you know, cars That's disappearing true. from garages and all of that sort of thing. I'd be intrigued to sort of know Alfie's reaction to, oh, wait, you're with Phil now. You know, that 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 whole thing. You know, so there is, unfortunately, storyline potential for uh, an Alfie return. But I, for one, hope they don't pursue it. No, same. Because I think they, I've said this before, and whether you, you can agree with me or disagree with me, I'm not that fast. But I, I, I think they, they just, dis- they killed Alfie's <laughs> character. They just, they damaged him. Oh, they I damaged hated him Alfie by the end. So hated, badly. Hated Alfie by the end. Yeah. What they did to him. And so, and then they've got a kind of Alfie character now already on there. Terry. They've got yeah, Terry there need, now. I so I feel like they've really probably got that. Him. They filled that. Yeah. Yeah. They filled that niche. Yeah. So you don't uh, have Martin to knows, back, doesn't that he? That means a lot. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening, BBC. Martin knows, doesn't he, that Tommy's dad is Michael Moon. So what's, how, what yeah. do you think Martin's going to do then to approach it with Kat? Do you think he's going to encourage Kat to tell her, to tell the truth to her son? I mean, I, I, I don't see what this, I mean, this is the first time that it's really become an issue. So I kind of feel that Martin is going to say to Kat, he's going to, like, because the thing is, Tommy said to Martin that he was, he wanted to go and live with his dad this week. Not necessarily because he's fallen out with Kat about anything, um, but because he thinks that his dad is, was, would be perfectly willing to take on Scarlet so that they can, you know, live together as an extended family. Because Tommy did rather throw, um, a few points in Kat's face this week, you know, when she was, bringing up the fact that, you know, yeah, but we look after family. We look after family here. It was like, well, Scarlett's family. And she's like, uh, yes, perhaps not as much as you realise, but yes, yes, she is. Um, so it's, <laughs> um, I, I can sort of, I think that's because the problem is obviously that Kat doesn't want to have any involvement with Scarlett because of, you know, the, the worry of Janine returning. <laughs> um, so, you know, Tommy's sort of clu- clueless about the whole thing. Um, and, I can sort of see Martin sort of, well, Martin's not going to be any help really, is he? He's going to sort of, I, if he's any sort of, if he, if he does the right thing, he's going to go to Kat and just tell her exactly the conversation that he had with Tommy. So that, and then sort of just, so, so you deal with that. I've got my own stuff to do. I've got my own stuff to deal with. I've got, you know, my wife's ovulating. I need to go, I need to go and sort that out. Uh, <laughs> so, um, he, so he, he can do that. But I have to say this week, cause I kind of thought Janine was back this week. And I have to say, I was sort of waiting for her to appear. Uh, you know, they could have dropped a plane on the square this week. I've been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When's Janine back? Yeah, hurry up, hurry up, come on. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but they, but they did mention that Scarlet is in court at some point soon, didn't they? Like they said that she. I don't know what for though. Why is she in, like? There was, there was, Tommy just sort Wasn't of it? vaguely mentioned it. I can't. I vaguely heard it was for a, a permanent residency. I think that they were going to find oh, somewhere. Okay. That's why Tommy's so keen to kind of then get cat. 
because there's still time for then Cat to step in and say, "Oh no, I want, I want um, Scarlet yeah. to look be looked after by us." Um, so that's why Tommy's looking. I mean, Tommy, he's got a mature pair of head on his shoulders, hasn't he? I mean, he's, it's nice he to is. see again. I like a, you, Tommy. A, a, a child actor. Yeah, same. I like to see mm. a, a child actor. Mm. Being, playing a part very well because he's such a believable character, Tommy. He seems very, like, he is. seems very rounded very quickly. Like, you know, he's kind of, mm. you knew his background anyway, but like the way he's being put across as well. I just, I really enjoy watching the scene. Well. The scene between Martin yeah. and Tommy this week mm, was really good. I liked it. And I thought the um, actor, I forget, James By, who uh, was acting alongside uh, new Tommy, uh, I thought he did it really well too. Like, it was, uh, the way he was talking, it very, very natural. So I actually thought that was a really nice scene on Friday between them two. Mm. And it, 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 yeah, I like it, new Tommy a lot. Obviously, as you say, anything, yeah, anything to do with uh, 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 Janine coming back, I've got a name then, that's terrible. Anything to do with Janine coming back wow. is going to be. Uh, going to be you know gripping stuff um but yes. uh, i think you don't have to wait much longer rob for janine's return that's mm-hmm. all i'm gonna say for now mm. um but uh coming up then is isaac sheree and patrick and isaac has been released from hospital and he's running again he's doing sexual innuendos with his dad patrick and he's all ready to go back to school and start work again him and lola have well. decided that they don't yeah, all is well. Don't need to go back to Trinidad. And and Cherie has taken exception to this and has now kind of taken the part of what she's accused Lola the whole time of doing, and that is manipulating and kind of moulding Isaac into what could potentially be quite damaging for him. She phoned the school and told the headmistress that Isaac's not well enough to come back yet, but then lied to Isaac and said that the school told her that he, he wasn't well enough and that, you know, wait till the social media thing has settled down a bit. And so the decision has been now made that they are going to Trinidad together. Now, we talked about this already, about whether it's the right decision for him to go. But um, how, what do you, how do you feel about Cherie's character and the way that's kind of progressed? Because Cherie's gone from being uh. quite a likeable to quite a... Nasty, and annoying, difficult to like character, and annoying. Yeah, she's she's not she's not great. She is that's the the word to describe Sheree at the minute. She's just annoying. Um, you know, and it's a shame because, like we say, I really miss I miss Sheree. Sort of, you know, the sort of Sheree where we'd look at Sheree and wonder whether she was going to start suggesting things like an open relationship to Patrick, you know, and randomly getting drunk in in, in restaurants, all that sort of thing. I miss that Sheree. I miss fun loving Sheree where she would just you know drink rum with Patrick and have a great time. Um. I mean, you know, the thing is, we're supposed to be seeing Cherie, I think, as, you know, a really concerned mother and, you know, worrying about Isaac's health and, you know, which is fair enough considering that he has just, you know, been sectioned and, you know, been, you know, with mental health problems for so long. But I don't, the thing is, she's trying to, she's trying to take him away from everything, but I also think that she's trying to take herself away from everything. You know, she wasn't even going to tell Patrick that she was going to Trinidad. Um, so, Mm. I think it's just the fact that she needs to she needs to get over the fact that Isaac has these problems because Isaac has you know totally accepted it. Lola's totally accepted it and said you know I will be there for you whenever. The only person that with the biggest problem with any of this is Cherie. Um, so I'm sort of waiting for that exactly. moment where it's probably going to have to be Patrick or maybe even Isaac who eventually turns around to her and says all of this, um, and then hopefully Cherie will sort of go back to the Cherie that we know and love. But it's mm. It's it's just kind of unfortunate that they've had... The thing is, with these sorts of storylines, there is always one character who does this role, isn't there? You know, there's always one character yeah, who thinks that they yeah. know better than the... Thinks that they know better than the patient, for want of a better phrase. You know, thinks they know better than everybody else, ignores every single piece of advice coming to them and just wants to run away from it all and pretend it never happened. And unfortunately, that's what Cherie's role is in this. Um, and it's not a particularly great facet to her character. Um, so I'd be more interested to see kind of what you know, that moment of realisation where uh, I'm, if anything, making things worse here. You know, I I don't know why she thinks that taking Isaac away from everything that he knows and getting him, taking him to completely unfamiliar territory and possibly taking him into culture shock and all of this sort of thing is going to be good for his general health at the moment. It's like, it's a terrible idea. I'm pretty sure that if he, she was to speak to a single doctor, they would say, that's a terrible idea, Cherie. Are you nuts? Like, that's mm. a really, really bad idea. But she doesn't... So, 
But yeah, but she doesn't believe in what the doctors are telling her, does she? She believes no, that no. the doctors aren't diagnosing her son properly. She thinks she she can, as long as she's got the pills, though. She's, as long as she can get the medicine, she can then <laughs> self-medicate yeah. her son for her. Isn't it? Do you think Cherie's playing a dangerous game here? Because she's going to push a lot of people away if she carries on going down this path. Mm-hmm. She's she's already kind of lost a friend in Lola, a bit, but then they were never BFFs to begin with. But then there's Patrick, who's always kind of supported her, always kind of flown the flag for her, even when... Other people were saying that what she was doing was wrong. Patrick still supported her throughout this. And ultimately, she's going to lose her son, Isaac, because I think Isaac, mm-hmm. Isaac, you can tell he's, he feels like he's controlled. He's very, he likes to control his own life. And as, as long as he's got the right people behind him, he can. So maybe, do you think he'll push Cherie, his mum, away because she's controlling him, but in the wrong direction? Mm, it's possible. I mean, I th- yeah, I think the thing is, I think Isaac's realising that he is quite enjoying life with Lola. Uh, you know, and I think we should, you know, sort of shout out the fact that this whole storyline has been the making of Lola, I think. I think it's completely cemented her, finally, after quite a long time as, like, a really dependent, mature character. It's really, I think the storyline has done absolutely wonders for Lola. Um, but yeah, and I think, yeah. I think Isaac is going to sort of realise that, you know, life is much better with Lola and the only person really causing me aggro at the moment. I think, I think Isaac is kind of like, yeah, I can deal with the social media comments. You know what I mean? It, you know, it's, it's tomorrow's, it's tomorrow's Lou roll papers. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's fine. You know, people will get bored with it. And <laughs> tomorrow's I will chip take... paper. Well, you do what you like, you chip paper, mate. Um, you know, I, <laughs> Um, I, you know, I think that he's, he's basically got kind of like a blase attitude about it. You know, he, he, he's trying to talk to, you know, his, what, to the school. Um, you know, it seems like the head teacher of the school is prepared to at least bring him in, like, say, right, what do we need to do here? How's this, how's this all going to work? And the only, but again, the only person causing problems with any of this is Cherie. So it's not going to take long, I don't think, for him to realise that Cherie is the person that's making things a little bit harder than they need to be. And then, Maybe, she, like you say, Cherie will be sort of left out in the cold and then she's going to have to sort of come back on her knees and beg forgiveness. Do you sympathise with Cherie or do you think that she needs a slapping down and told what to do? Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I've got a sympathy for her in the in the fact that she is Isaac's mother and she is, in her mind, trying to do what's best for him and what's best for her. Um, but yeah, I don't think she's necessarily vindictive about it. I just think she's going about it completely the wrong way. And unfortunately, it's not coming across as amazingly likable. So I'd like them to sort of no. get over that so we can have Drunk on Rum Cherie back. Because Drunk on Rum Cherie is a screw. Yeah. And I miss her. Yeah. 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 Rumba Cherie. She likes to kind of dance Rumba with Patrick Cherie. in the living room with his yes. records. Yeah. Which, yes. Flirting with other people. Love it. Miss Cherie. Yeah. 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 Same. This is a big story then. So Zach this week finally tells the truth to Nancy that he was the one who did the hit and run with Frankie. In a way, I think he did it deliberately before Mick had a chance to say with Frankie because they were both wanting to tell Nancy at the same time. But Zach got in there first. Zach seemed very relaxed and casual and quite relieved almost that he had done it to Nancy because when we saw the scenes later he was just playing with baby Albie on the in the park throwing balls right. at him, a little kid and <laughs> like I mean, yeah, yeah he seemed quite fine but he felt like his conscience had been lifted and that was really nice to see actually yeah. it was nice to see that character openly said you know what yes it's ruined a potential relationship that could have been something so much more but actually this was the right thing to do and it's so rare yeah. you see on EastEnders someone thinking this was the right thing to do and considering that yeah. his dad was Gavin and we know that Gavin was the but Gavin was a bad guy then you it know it's nice. nice to see that Sharon's brother is a very you know is a much kinder person however Nancy didn't take what it very well Sharon? and she <laughs> and she uh, she went to um her dad Mick and basically accused him of basically favoring Frankie choosing to protect her over Frank choosing to protect Frankie over Nancy and that mm. she's basically ruined anything that they've had. They've had any bond together. He trusts, she trusted him and that trust is gone. Um, in a really quite heartfelt moment between Nancy and Mick. Um, I mean, I did personally, I felt a bit sorry for Frankie because I felt like Frankie was in the middle of all this. She didn't mean to cause any harm. But because of obviously the situation where it's a very fractured relationship in the Carter household at the moment, Nancy's always treading on eggshells. She said it herself. Was Mick right to kind of keep the secret from Nancy 
the whole time should he should he have been honest and open from the beginning and do you think that if he had been nancy would have been a bit more sympathetic toward frankie's cause in the end well, I mean, I think that it's. I mean, Zach surprised me completely because we had we had, we were talking about how we thought that this was going to come out, and it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to at all. I thought, to be honest, I thought the last no person was going to tell Nancy what happened was Zach. No turkeys thrown. Um, I, <laughs> I so no more of my impressions, person. I'm afraid, kids. <laughs> Not yet. Well, it's wait till the run up to Christmas. There's still opportunities. There's always opportunities for turkeys to be thrown at Christmas. Um, yeah, I, so I was really surprised that um, Zach actually was the one that told her because I, I just didn't think he would. I thought that he, I, I thought that he'd sort of be like, "Well, me and Nancy are fine. You know, there's no reason for her to know this. She doesn't, she, you know." And I thought that she, Nancy was going to overhear, you know, Mick talking and some bit because I think that the person that's hurt the most in all this is Mick. You know, she hasn't known Frankie all that long. You know, that's she's fairly easy to sort of drop. Zach again is a relationship fairly easy to drop. Well, not easy, but you know, it hurts her, but. It, but then it's the it's the fact that Mick has lied to her and kept it from her that's really sort of that's really hurt her. Um, I mean, I'm surprised that she bothered keeping it from Linda because Linda is blissfully unaware of any of this. She has not a clue about what you know the fact that her family is is currently at war. Not a clue. She's just sort of waddling around no pregnant secrets. and worrying about her plants. Yeah, no hashtag no more secrets. They are the worst family I think Walford's ever seen for keeping secrets from each other. It's so <laughs> annoying. Because, like, just stop it. Just tell each other the truth. If the Carters just told each other the truth, they would be, to be fair, they'd have no storylines whatsoever. No storylines whatsoever. They would have nothing to do if they just sort of, every now so often, just sat down at the kitchen table and thought, right, okay, it's Friday. You know what Friday is? It's secret day. Anybody's got any secrets? Let them out now and then we'll deal with them. You know, that's the healthy way to approach these things. Um, well, that's I what think the Bills used to gonna... do. The Bills used to... Well, and yeah. The used to exactly. call over the family together. Lou used to get... Right, we're having a family meeting. 10 o'clock. Come yeah. over. Yeah, yeah, that's what they used to do yeah. in the old days. That's what they used to do in the classics. And they do that anymore. That's what the Carters should do. Have family meetings. That'd be fine. They'll sort it all they out. Need a, they need a Lou-type matriarch in there, don't they? A Lou-type matriarch just sat in the back, slap bang Ooh, in the middle of the car. Who just... Who mm. that oh, It wouldn't be Elaine. I think Elaine's a bit too flighty to be that sort of role, isn't she? You reckon Elaine could 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 do that? Not Elaine. What's her name? She's by Elaine Page. What's her name? Is it Elaine? Elaine, it's Page. Elaine isn't it? But she's also <laughs> played by Elaine Page. No, she's played by Elaine, not Elaine Page. She's played by some sort of musical. Who are you talking about? Linda's mum. Oh, her. She's not played by Elaine Page. <laughs> Who's she played no, by? Is she she's played, played by a musical person. I don't know, but she. If anyone knows who uh, Linda's mum is played by, it's, it's not Elaine Page. I'm sure it'll come to me it's in a minute. It's definitely not Elaine Page. Because Elaine come to Page me in a minute. talks like this. And, well. just, just but anyway, I think who you're alluding to as a matriarch should be Aunt Babe. Perhaps that would be a good matriarch. She's a bit evil to, to be a matriarch though, isn't she? She's a bit evil for that role. I can't imagine Lou sort of doing no. the things that Babe did. I don't know. Lou's got skeletons in her closet, as you find out later on when she. T- but Lou wouldn't stand outside buildings and curse them, would she? I curse you. I don't, know. I don't think Lou would do that. <laughs> well, anyway, um, so yeah, I think that it's um, it's it's going to be a bit of a long journey now for Mick and Nancy. I can't imagine Linda being kept in the dark from it for much longer because she's surely going to start wondering why aren't you two speaking to each other? Why have you broken up with Nancy? Why is Frankie in tears all the time? You know, so it's going to <laughs> they're going to they're, gonna, they're attempting to keep quite a lot from Linda at this point. And Linda, you know, as blindsided as she can be sometimes, is not going to miss any of that for particularly lo- for particularly long. Um, are you pleased the secrets out? Did you think that they could have dragged it out a bit more, or do you think that it's come out now and it's it's gonna, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes from here? What do you think? I'm pleased the secrets out because I think that it means that Zach and Nancy has a chance, hundred percent. Um, I like I say, I feel like that Frankie was unfairly kind of dealt the hand of being in the middle of it all. And I I hope that Zach might have a chat with Frankie, but not the kind of chat where you see Nancy, you know, moving the neck curtains from above the Vic again, kind of thinking that they're having secret chats and like something's going on between them and they're conspiring of how they can upset Nancy next time. Um, I, I just think that they need that kind of conversation between Frankie and Zach now to kind of mend the ways um i think the one thing we are going to get out of this is that mick will never ever forgive zach <clears throat> forgive zach for uh kind of throwing him <laughs> under the bus because let's be honest yeah, zach threw mick under the bus a big time when he oh yeah massively. when he came out of his confession he he pretty much went straight to the jugular and said like i wanted to tell you for a long time but your dad wouldn't let me 
and he <laughs> threw the hot potato toward Nancy. Nancy was like, yeah. what? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think any love, any love that there might have ever been between Mick, not that there was much anyway, but anything that no. they, that strand of friendship or family that they could have built there, I think it's completely gone. But again, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Again, and that You're right excite there. me. You're right there, Alex. That the relationship. I am, yes, yes. I need, I need a fag. Uh, that, that relationship <laughs> that they had between, um, uh, a between them for would be American really interesting to see. <clears throat> oh yeah, sorry. Uh, it would be really interesting, um, for, uh, if Nancy and Zach did get back together again. And I think, uh, I think Linda mm. will be the saving grace there because obviously Linda, I think Linda and Sharon will be the ones that build the bridges between them once Sharon perhaps gets out of prison if she does end up going to prison I mean it was said actually wouldn't Sharon look lovely in some prison overalls you know Orange is the New Black I can imagine oh, that. Orange is the New Black yeah I can imagine it Letitia oh yeah, yeah, I'd love it you know? her eye is just sort of watching people in the shower stay away from me give me about the soap <laughs> Um, it's. <laughs> I mean, I've been I've been watching Wentworth and a lot of Bad Girls, and I would love a spin off right now of like the mm. women of Wolford in prison. That'd be fantastic. Even yeah. like, remember in the old days they used to do like the VHS DVD featured ones over mm. Christmas. Time. A soap bubble. Used to buy that's them called. for like twelve ninety nine. Never. D- it's got a soap oh, bubble. Thank you very much. So yeah, nice. Brooks- <laughs> it's what Brookside used to do it all the time, and Eastenders have done a few, and Corrie's done a few. It's what it's called, a soap <laughs> bubble, and you do like a little one off. Uh, let's call it an adventure. From like a completely different side of it, take two characters and put them on a separate adventure. That's what it's called, a soap bubble. Because obviously it's got soap there. They should do that again. They don't necessarily have to. Yeah, they don't necessarily have to release it as a DVD or a video. They could release it as like an online extra or something like that. I would well, they did. Love they that. did the they, they did like the podcast a... things, didn't they? A few a couple of years ago, you know, when they were telling like the story of Haley and um, and Mel, they did they did like a little podcast yes. drama about, it, didn't they? They're soap bubbles. There you go. They did. Yes, they they, they were they were fine. The, the Doctor Leg one of those was was excellent. Yes, guess, thank you, Rob. See, this is why you're on the show. Mm, Your bubble was hired. You, you know, you keep us informed. <laughs> right, so um, I'm excited now because we are going to talk about a story that we thought would never happen. We thought there was not a chance in absolute hell that this story was going to happen. <sighs> I mean, and there it is, <laughs> plain in sight in front of us, happening. How embarrassing! Um, and that how is how embarrassing that we were just completely <laughs> shown up, <laughs> shown up completely. And it wasn't even the fact that we just didn't say we were happy. We openly ridiculed the idea. We actually had a conversation. In fact, this would be a good time to throw in one of those flashbacks that you do so well, where we openly ridiculed the storyline. Um, there is, there is a, there's a section of the fan community. There seems to be rather obsessed with the idea of Suki and Honey getting into a relationship. Um, as mm. in a sexual relationship. And yeah, I don't yeah. think it's going to happen. I don't. And yet, this week, there it was. Suki Pansar there it was. made a move on Honey and kissed her. Now, we thought that... See, the problem with COVID at the minute and the fact that they are you know, having to social distance the actors and all of that sort of thing is because... You know, when actors start sort of touching each other, it's like, oh my god, they're going to be kissing by the end of the week. Why is that happening? Why are they touching each other? Why have they been allowed to bubble? What's going on? Um, and it seems that Suki has developed feelings for Honey. Now, where, oh, I mean, so this is, what do you think of this as a, as a storyline for a start? Let's just start with that. How do you feel? Like, what do you think? Well, this is it. Okay. So, when it first got released and I quite vocally on Twitter said, this won't work because there's mm. been no evidence to this point of Honey ever showing that she's bisexual or a lesbian or fluid, whatever term you feel comfortable using in this kind of, in it's this story. Um, Suki <laughs> is more believable because she had that. that past, because she had that past with uh, Ash where she kind of didn't like that. Ash was a fluid sexuality and she kind of felt disagreeable of it. There's been a lot leading up to it to this point where you've seen Suki talking that she's not allowed to be open. She's not allowed to be herself. There was lots of leading lines that kind of seemed to head that direction. And as soon as you started hearing those lines, you knew this is this is the path they're taking here. So the story, I feel, is a little bit struggling and strained and it's kind of there just kind of almost also with Jay kind of bringing him in and the story is there however the way it's been written and the way it's been portrayed and acted has been fantastic and I'm on board (laughs) I'm enjoying it 
I mean, there was no doubt whatsoever. Yeah, I have no doubt whatsoever that I knew that their acting powerhouse. Let's be honest with you, they are Belvinda and Emma are oh, great actresses, fantastic actresses, and I and I feel like, especially with Emma's case, she's never been given an opportunity to like have a really interesting kind of story. Uh, other than it kind of being, but when she was with Habiba, those those scenes with Habiba on the bed, I just you just knew that there's so much more she could portray and give on the show. And when she was being almost abused by Adam, but then she stood up to Adam and threw the bin at his face. You know that that you know that it, you could tell that it was good. But, but with Belvinda, I honestly I didn't have any doubt whatsoever to see from the moment she came on screen, we all knew that we were going to fall in love with Suki. I'm a bit disappointed that they yeah. kind of softened Suki. I don't, I, and even though they kind of brought back the kind of, because uh, she's upset now and she feels embarrassed, she's kind of gone, reverted back to being the Suki that we remember. Um, whether it means that she's going to now kind of go down, because obviously there was that, there's a rift between the Panasars and the Mitchells bubbling along as well, because Phil saw the garage had been renamed Panasar Mitchell, Mitchell Motors this week. And he was like, my house now. And so everyone came to <laughs> beckoned, family yeah. meeting. <laughs> um, HQ. I, I don't I don't I don't know but is it, that's what I mean I think I thought the writing I genuinely thought the writing was really good I thought the way it was written was really good and I I I became engrossed by it and I was convinced by it and I wanted to know more about it and I was able to kind of put my reservations to the side and jump on the the, the mine cart and ride the story and see where it would take me so although I initially <laughs> Ride on the minecart and go on the journey. <laughs> I did want yeah. to see more of it, and and so I'm happy. I'm happy that it's taken this route. But um, I, I don't know. You're. Okay. I don't think you're quite so convinced, are you? I'm not convinced by it yet. I think that it's. See, this is the thing. If they're going to do this, the way for me to be, for, for, it's going to. If they're going to have to take a little bit more selling, if they want me to, I don't think that they're going to be a couple. I think, if anything. Where I will take this is if this is a case of Suki not knowing what to do with affection, not knowing what to do with friendship because she's so used to pushing people away and being pushed away by people. It's like whenever sort of Ash or Kira has a go at her about something, it's almost as though she sort of nods and thinks, yeah, that's the way life's supposed to be. You know, that's the life I've created for myself, so that is the reaction that I'm used to. And yet she's tried to do that to Honey, where she mm. snapped at her and, you know, been horrible to her or whatever, and Honey has just sort of stayed there and taken it. And then continued being nice to her. And it's completely and utterly thrown her off kilter with how she kind of thinks that life's supposed to be. I'm going to say it now. I don't, th- it, for the people that are online and may have made this whole sort of thing, fair play, you saw it come much better than we did. You need to sort out your, 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 your names. Hansuki is not a, is not a joint name. That's not how it's supposed to work, right? <laughs> it's supposed to be half of the one name, half of the other. For example, me and Alex will be Rolex. That's quite nice, isn't it? I like that. Rolex, like the watch. It's quite, that's quite a market. But that's how it's yeah. supposed to... That's in Rolex, yeah. Rolex. Um, <laughs> See, any time we'll be up market. <laughs> where's our fan fiction? Get on it. Yeah, literally, the only time. Don't encourage people. Even then we'd probably be sold on, then even, then pro- <laughs> <laughs> even then we'd probably be on Billy's stall for like 10p. Um, but yeah, that's... But, uh, yeah, so the um, thing is, Suki's still a fairly young character. I struggle with the fact that she was so against Ash in the stage where... Um, you know, Ikra was her girlfriend. She seemed to be struggling with that. Um, so it, I don't know if that's... Because, you know, there's this whole thing of when people have an issue with um, people being gay. Well, that must mean they're gay themselves. And very rarely is that actually the case. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this is all just in my opinion. Um, but Honey has, you know, been on the show for about 16 years and has never, ever shown any signs that she, like you say, that she is fluid or bisexual or prepared to sort of question herself or anything like that. You know, she's... And even... <laughs> there was a great moment when Suki eventually sort of... Sort of when Suki kissed her and the honey was kind of just like, oh, I'm sorry. As though she was issuing yeah. the Minute Mart and had just <laughs> you know, having to tell a customer that there wasn't anything in stock. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a, we, we don't have any lesbian experience, any experimental lesbian experiences in this week, I'm afraid. Maybe wait till next week. They might come in on delivery. You know, she sort of, sort of had that contrition about her that was, that was quite sweet. 
And even now, even now, she's still sort of there with Suki. She's kind of like, yeah, you know, it's fine. Stuff happens. We all get confused. Yeah. You know, we don't mm. have to worry about it. Now, Suki's doing, like you say, Suki's doing what Suki does now and has started trying to, you know, kick against her. And again, Honey is still, still standing there resiliently, you know, by changing her shifts and making her work evenings, presumably so that they don't have to work together, so that Suki will do the mornings, Honey will do the evenings, and so never the twain shall meet. Um, and she doesn't have to deal with it. Um, but Honey's sort of like, yeah, fine, it's a bit inconvenient, but if that's what you want me to do, absolutely fine. So she's she's just taking well, it all. Honey wasn't that happy about it, was she? Because she, she was kind thrilled, of but I think she's still going to do it. it. And even yeah, or well, she'll still do it because that's Honey. She's nice, but she also the way she talked to Jay, it was like she was because she had the one thing she said to Suki was, "I've not told anyone about this." So this is our secret and mm. we don't need to take it any further. It's fine. It's the end of it. And I think that's hurt Suki too. Because so I think Suki feels a bit like, well, you've just taken my feet. Not that Honey has or meant to, but Honey's kind of taken her feelings, kind of said, oh, no, I don't really want that. And then thrown it to one side, but said, but it's fine because I won't say anything to anyone else. And that's hurt Suki too. And I think she did that kind of as a gesture when she gave her back the necklace. Because when she put the necklace down and she was a bit like, oh, here's your necklace as well and you just saw when when Suki went over to the front desk and kind of grabbed the necklace and just started mm. weeping and like trying yeah. to constrain this cry that she just desperately you could tell she just desperately wanted to scream out and like oh Wail. and yes. that makes me wonder yeah is this, is this do you think this is the first time Suki's done something like this had feelings toward a woman or even gone far that she's kissed a woman had a relationship with a woman before she married <sighs> Is this the first time Suki's done it? I'm, or is this something that I has happened so. in Suki's past? Well, I mean, I wonder if it, like, if there's any connection to be made with the whole her and Peter thing here. You know, it's sort of just her... Re, like, she's just sort of using sexuality to sort of... But then the reason that she did it with Peter was entirely different, I thought. Because when, because when her and Peter did it, there was Suki was very much in sort of bitch mode there. And there wasn't much more to... At the time, they wasn't they weren't really throwing a huge amount of layers at her at the time, um, but I wonder if there's going to be some sort of connection made between sort of the two experiences. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, 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 you're a bit more sold in it than I am at the minute. I, I'm going to take a little bit more convincing um, because it's for me, it's come a little bit out of left field, um, you know. And I'm not a massive fan of sort of sexuality confusion stories being thrown in just to sort of rile up a certain section of the fan community and get that and get them on side if I'm perfectly honest um but I'm open to it I'm open to I'm I'm not closing my I'm not closing my mind off to it completely I'm open for it them to sell it to me I'm going to need a, a little bit more of sort of knowing how Suki's internal mind is working as to how we've got to this point that's my guess as to where they're going and if it if it goes in the direction of it's just literally Suki's reaction to someone being nice to her for a change that I'll sort of ta- I'll, I'll take it I won't I'm going to have a huge amount of difficulty if Honey then starts reciprocating her feelings that's really going to be a struggle for me I'm afraid because it's just not something yeah. that's been established with Honey ever you know and I'm not saying that you mm, can't I think... suddenly realise that you fancy the same gender later on in life that it happens of course it does I also sort of struggle with the notion of having mother and daughter both being bisexual. I sort of, again, I know it happens, but it's a bit sort of, it's it's a bit sort of inconvenient for soap purposes. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm. It's a, yeah, the storyline is in its very early I stages. That's a bit unfair, I think. maybe. No. Why though? Because a mother and a daughter both being well, bisexual it, in the it same can family. Happen in families. It's never, it can happen, but. I've I, had a friend. Yeah, it's sort of open. Yeah, and, and, and I've had a friend. I mean, no, who who I worked with, and she was she was gay, and she had uh, two brothers mm. and two sisters, and one of her brothers was gay, and one of her sisters was gay. So there were, th- you know, of the five children, three were gay. It's, it's. I don't think you can kind of pick and choose how family members work in the real world. So I don't think I don't think that's un- unheard of. I think it's not unheard of because in my family, I'm gay. My aunties are gay. And my cousin has just announced that she's getting engaged to a woman. So, yeah, no, I'm not saying in the same family that it doesn't happen. I feel like I'm more on board myself because I feel like that the direction with this will be that Honey will support Suki for her perhaps future becoming bisexual. Um, that's how I feel this story's going. Um, and that's fine with me because it almost kind of gives it a bit more of an interesting story than if they do bring Daddy Panasar onto the uh, onto the stage Daddy as well. Daddy Panasar's you know, Kira, isn't it for you? Then. Yeah. No, 
for me, but for Suki, it's her husband. And I Daddy's just, I just well. think that I just, I, I think if they were going to do something <laughs> like that, it would that I would be on board with because with Honey, I think she's just the support that Suki needs. Um, but I, I, the, the one thing that I, it's got nothing to do with her sexuality storyline. The one thing I'm worried about is are they taking Suki away from a potential Mitchell Panasar war that we're all predicting is going to happen at some point in the next year or so. And does that pull Suki out of that kind of story? Because that would, that would make me a bit upset, to be honest with you. That's more interesting to me. To be honest with you, yeah, but, to, but, to see that, but then we're going into the we're going into the uh, kind of mm. patterns of um, shenanigans, and you know how I do. So maybe if we can find an yeah, even kill, we differ on yeah, we differ, on, we yeah, we a, differ on that as well. <laughs> yeah, we differ on that as well, don't we? Yeah, so it's yeah. it's it's sort of what storyline does the other one? For, do, we, do we find more interest? I mean, I, I, like I say, completely. I'm not writing off. I'm not writing it off completely at all. You know, it's again, it's a storyline that's in its very early stages. Um, I'd just like to know where Suki is coming from in this why she, this has kind of happened yeah um, the thing is I didn't sense that there was a massive amount of internal conflict before we got to the kiss on on, on the episode there was this, we got like two episodes of it being clear that Suki was sort of you know doing the whole sort of thing of they accidentally touch hands in a bowl or you know you know she's putting the necklace on her and looking all simpering at so we got like a couple of episodes of that and then we were straight to the kiss there wasn't a sort of run up to it at that point where we were kind of like maybe Suki could fancy a woman at some point. Yeah, you know, it's it was a bit like when Callum, um, we, we were told that Callum was gay. It was it was literally you know the mon the, the the previous Friday we were told that he was gay and was struggling with all these internal conflicts, and then the next Friday he was kissing Ben again with without that much run up to it. So I don't know whether it's mm-hmm. it's going to be that sort of thing. Who knows? But I'm open to it. Is all I'm saying. I'm not writing off completely. So yeah, tell me that's more. fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Wait, are you a bit because obviously there's a few people, and this, let's just talk this very briefly because I want to get to I went one to gossip because we got a great question this week from uh, one of our listeners. Um, do you think that, uh, that a lot of people have uh, said uh, on social media that you know there's no female female relationships on the show, there's no representation of it? Well, there is, and that's true to be fair because a lot of the, the but there's a lot of there's a lot of gay relationships are pretty much centered around the Balam universe. Let's be honest, and yes, mm. there's Mila and Ikra, but do you think then they could lean more toward Mila and Ikra's story and, and rather than kind of creating a new well, story? This is the thing. They've got they've got they've got well, the potential the pieces there. Could they not have used what they yeah. had? Yeah, this is this is my other this is my other point as well. It's the fact that we've got you know Balam. No one can say that Balam have been underrepresented on the show at all. <laughs> you know, like we know Balam is there. Balam are <laughs> Balam are there and loud. You know, um, you know people like it, you know both of Ikra's relationships have been extremely under the radar, which I sort of feel a bit sorry for her about. You know, it's you know, you've got a character. You know, again with Sonya is another bisexual character. You know, who you've, you've got these people there to represent. You know, you've got bisexuals on the show already. Do you need to? You know, is so? Why don't we show? You know, why why can't we see more of them as opposed to sort of making other people? I, 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 I'm wording this wrong, but you know, there, there is there is people there to sort of tell us the stories of what bisexuals experience. You know, the bisexual storylines. You know, they're there for people. You know, you've got. You know, and we've had we've had bisexual men in the past. What was his, the, the the name that Gary Lucy played? Um, I can't remember what his name was. Was it? Danny? Yes, he, yeah, you know, had, he had, the a thing, he had a thing with, with Lucy and Johnny, and, and yeah, and he had a thing with Johnny, yeah. and then was uh, snogging Lucy at the same time. Um, so you know, it, it there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with showing bisexual. Of course, there isn't. They have, and the bisexual people have been massively underrepresented on soaps recently. And I think even the yeah. show has come out admitted in the past that they sh- they messed up with Sonya. You know, they 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 were having lines where Sonya was was officially gay one minute and then straight the other without addressing the fact. Oh well, maybe she's bisexual. Mm. You know, so it's. I think it's. You know, it. I we need, and I think actually also lesbians uh, in soaps are massively underrepresented as well. Um, you know, it's. Yeah. You know, Ikra has been in the show for quite a long time now, and once we learned that she was gay. It was great, you know. We want to, I'd look, you know, I want to see, I want to see it getting into these relationships. But she was with Ash, and we barely saw anything of them. It's kind of like, do you is, are they, what are you saying to us? Are you saying that the only time that gay relationships have any drama about them is if 
it's based on the fact that, oh, I didn't realise I was gay, but now I am and I'm madly in love with you. Is that the only time that you've, yeah, you're, you're telling out. us that gay relationships are interesting to watch? You know, of course it's not. You know, we've seen yeah, straight relationships yeah, going yeah. through all of the roller coaster that they can over the years. So give us that with the, mm. give us that with the gay characters. You don't need to focus initially on yeah. that initial confusion, you know? So who knows? No. No, I agree. I think they, just to wrap it up, I also think that when they made Karen, I know it's meant to be a silly story, but when they did the Karen Again, story, yeah. she thought she tried to be a lesbian, that felt a bit like, mm. why are you doing that? And I, I mean, it yeah. just, it's, it just, it's, yeah, it's like, people can be fluid, absolutely not a problem whatsoever, but it's just, it's just, you know that the hate mob, the first thing they jump on is whenever you make a character, if they seem to be choosing what they are and then as soon as you start doing that everyone's like oh there you go that's my point proven you know gays aren't born mm. you know the way they are they, they they choose to be that way and it's like no but that's... there is there is that fluidity of course there is in all sexuality and you know lgbtq plus honestly the whole community i think uh, just need just need to be represented in the correct way and mm. um you know, if done thoughtfully, like I say, with Honey maybe supporting Suki with her coming out, um, if there is indeed a coming out to have, then absolutely fine. Not a problem at all. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, there's, we're not at the end of this story by any means. In fact, we're just at no. the very beginning. But um, mm. that is that is actually all the stories this week we're going to chat about. However, we have a very interesting uh, message that was sent to us. Um, and so we're going to discuss it on I Ain't Want to Gossip. And you know me, I ain't one to gossip. So I will be reading out some of your messages that you sent to us on our Twitter this week. But before any of that, we got a message from Michael Perry, who's also known as the Plant Geek. We share a birthday. What, you and uh, the Plant Geek? We have exactly the same birthday. What star sign are you? Scorpio. (laughs) So uh, Michael Perry has written to us and has asked... Has EastEnders got too many characters? It seems like the roll call is more than ever, or am I just imagining things? Now, when he sent me this message, I had a quick look to see uh, what was going on with like the kind of character toll. And uh, at the moment, there's 54 main characters. However, if you're going to include the children characters, uh, Bailey and Tommy and so on, there's actually 75. That's quite a lot. Does that feel a bit bloated to you? Because quite that a lot. Feels, that feels quite bloated to me. And does it does that seem to damage the way that stories are flowing at the moment? Because does there's like is are we going to not quite to the same standard as block storytelling, but like is like is it almost like a random wheel of this week these characters are gonna get stories and then this week these stories are gonna get these characters are gonna get stories. Or mm. because I feel like they you kinda of get that impression because everything we talk about this week, bar maybe one or two stories, won't have a continuation next week and it will almost go quiet until they need to bring them back out again so yeah does it feel like a bloated cast to you and what do you think is it damaging or does it not feel that way to you i mean to be honest with you i didn't realize there was quite that many so maybe it doesn't feel that way to me um i didn't 75 with kids i mean the thing to be fair though the kids are sort of there as and when they need to be and it's my issue with like when you have so many kids is that we have mo- you'll always have a moment where you're like look at someone like kim for example like, I'm forever wondering where where Kim's kids are. Yeah, I mean, we do see Kim's kids kind of like getting palmed off to babysitting, uh, to, to people babysitting duties, I suppose. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if it, I presume it includes Pearl as well as the main characters. But um, yeah, 75. That's And they seem to be lot. including the kids a lot, a lot more now. Hmm. Yeah, but I haven't noticed. I, I, I'll be honest, I was surpri- I'm surprised it was that many. I mean, the thing is, with soaps these days, that's why you have... You know, that's that's because there's so many episodes now. You have to have the sort of wider cast to fill out the quota uh, and suit. And the, but it is also the reason why block storytelling is a thing, which most people aren't really a massive fan of. But then you have to give cast breaks, otherwise you've got the same people on screen at all times. So you know, it's. I mean, but then you're going into a sort of like, well, how many would you have, ideally? But well, this is it. Do you do you kind of do you kind of like work out a kind of future project of right? How many would be a good amount so that we can have a continuous flow for characters? So there doesn't seem to be like a kind of block when characters are in and characters are out. Um, I can't think of the exact date, and maybe someone might be able to help me. But uh, there was a time when they were told, I presume in the mid two thousands, they were told to. Cull, they were told to, not cull, it's a terrible term to use, but they were told to kind of cut back the number of cast 
or characters they're allowed on the show. So yeah, it feels yeah. like we're going kind of back to when they did start to expand and they got the the larger cast again. And I, I, I get that it makes sense to have that many because then you can kind of delve in, in and out of lots of different stories. But would you not prefer to kind of like focus on is it kind of watering down stories a little bit? Would you rather that they focused on five maybe very good stories with a smaller cast or have ten where there's two or three very good or not that all stories aren't very good, but you know, you know that some are filler. I've said it on the show before. Oh, oh that yeah. felt like a filler this week. Yeah. That felt like they just did it to kind of expand the half an hour for the episode. And do, would you rather that it was kind of like just consolidated gold? So it's just constant, you know, so it feels like, but, but then with that, there's the danger of that there was a bad story. It really stands out from the crowd and people will really kind yeah. of jump into it. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's always you know, the option. It's complicated. The, uh, yeah, it's the thing is, balance. yeah, the thing is with a story, you know, with, with many characters, you know, yeah, uh, we, we've made that secret with the fact that the grey storyline isn't our favourite. But, you know, with a larger cast, that means that we can have weeks without the grey storyline, for example. You know, it, it gives you, it, there's, and there'll be people that love the grey storyline, which is, which is also fine, but it means that they have their, they, you know, it gives you lots of options, basically, and you can, you can have weeks where the show is great for some viewers because all my favourite characters are on screen at the minute, all my favourite stories are on screen at the minute, and then that sort of goes on to the next group of people who are kind of like, well, now my favourite characters, now my favourite storylines are on screen at the minute. You've got to, you've got to have that sort of fluidity to sort of keep the show interesting and keep the show varied. Um, and it's, it, 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 <laughs> um, it's it's uh, <laughs> ran out of steam there completely. Um, you've got to have these. Sort of, you've got to have that fluidity, and it doesn't particularly bother me with so many characters. The only per, the only re, the only time it kind of bothers me at the minute, and there's something I wanted to rant about actually, which I didn't get a chance to. Um, Vi, for example, has literally just been brought in at the moment. It seems to sort of throw in a barbed comment during a scene and then walk out again. You know, mm. what is the point to a character like that? You know, I get I I get that those sorts yeah. of people exist, yeah. but it's kind of like. You know, my issue is you've hired someone like Gwen Taylor, who is a great actress. I could have gone in and done the sort of stuff that they've done with Vi recently. You know, it's not like they've given her anything massively, incredibly amazing to do yet. I'm sure she will get her time in the spotlight. Um, but it's like, well, you no, not, not, but it's like, well, you've got to bring in characters just, and have yeah, a purpose for them. To be giving it to her. Yeah, it's like they brought in the Monroes and their time will come. Where the, you know, we were saying at the start, remember when the Panasars first came, it's like, well, you know, great, so what are you here for? What are you, what are you going to bring to the table? And now, yeah. you know, we wouldn't be without the Panasars. You know, Isaac, for, I remember being at a time where I was kind of like, well, what's the point of Isaac? Like, why is he here? What What is his purpose? And, you know, this year he's sort of been one of the star players of the year, hasn't he? Yeah, so, sorry, no, I'm just picking up on a point you just said. So you said, like, you know, when you bring a new character in, there's, there's kind of, like, they don't kind of explore them very much. So because there's so many characters, does that then mean that the development of the character it seems to be forgotten a little bit more so then which can be a bit of a complaint of us uh, and other people is that there, there's no kind of there's no reason why that kind of that would happen to that character because we've never known that as their past or as their you know that's what's happened to them their development so mm. do you think again because we're bogged down with so many characters the development is kind of forgotten and so it becomes just sometimes, like the yeah. story is more part more important than the actual character yeah is, sometimes which yeah. kind of goes against the ethos of what eastenders or all soaps are about oh, soaps yeah exactly yeah that's the problem i think is when you've got to a stage where it's kind of like uh it, it, it it's because it sort of almost feels like you've pulling a storyline out of one bag and pulling a character out of another and just going right that's what we're doing this week then and we'll go work on that rather yeah, than it, yeah. you're giving yourself the opportunity to have these characters that you've built up and given themselves a rich textured history and thinking right well naturally the next step for that character is to go go in this direction so you know it's it but then again it's the problem of soaps that they've been they've now got so many episodes that they have to fill up the, the episode quota is so you know it's sort of, it's sort of a double-edged sword really but then that's the funny thing, and I know we've talked about this already, but they, they've they still got the four episodes a week, but all the episodes are roughly, if you're going to even kind of out the, the time frame, 20 minutes each. Mm. So that makes three episodes a week if you kept the half an hour. So, but then that's for another day. And yeah, I've talked about this before. And uh, hashtag drop Friday episode. Hashtag fr- drop the Friday episode. You know, that's, <laughs> just, that's, that's just, that's just me. Um, I'm going to read out some more comments this week. Uh, one is from our YouTube, which I thought I'd bring up because Rob was very confused last week, if you listened to the podcast, about what exactly Amazon lockers are. I got a huge email from Jeff 
But John Johnson on our YouTube said, I'm not sure if you have a problem with porch pirates in the UK, but it's a big problem in the States. In Brooklyn, we have lots of stores that will accept your Amazon and UPS deliveries so you don't get them swiped on your porch. I mean, what kind of crazy backward country do you live in when you have your post stolen from your doorstep? Yeah. It is packages on the porch. Who has porches? (laughs) (laughs) Who's got a porch? I've got a porch. I I have that. In the UK, we have vestibules, don't we? That's 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 the thing, and you can sort of leave a package Do we? there and then lock the door. Are vestibules, yeah, vestibules like large? Vestibules are the most pointless components of any house ever. Literally, you walk in, and then it's kind of like, right, I've now got another door to go through. That's literally the only point of them. Then you can maybe put a hat stand in there, and that's literally, and that's all they do. That's their only point. I don't see the point in vestibules Rob, whatsoever. Rob, what? let me re-educate what? you again. Gosh, <laughs> Rob, do. I feel like Give I educate you every week nowadays. Again. Well, the reason <laughs> Again. Amazon lockers last week. Um, oh, yeah. Vestibules, the two doors, there's a good yeah. reason for this. Because oh. the draft won't come into the main house. So you keep one door closed, come in through the front door, close the front door, open the next door. It's almost like an airlock. So you don't let in the cold air. Because we don't an live airlock. in a very warm country most of the time. Well, that's what they're for. Like they have I've on spaceships. Homes under the hammer to know, Rob. Yeah, to stop the cold air coming into the house. Stop it's space true. coming in. I'm not even suffocating making you this all. stuff up. No. Listen, everyone. We all know I'm right. And Rob's now feeling very embarrassed because he thought, oh, vestibules are rubbish. And it's like, no, yeah, vestibules are very useful things. Them. Well, no, I've never had a vestibule, but they always uh, just seem comment pointless to me. on Twitter as well. At Bailey Thomas has said, it was a good week. I feel like something has changed behind the scenes. Characters were true to themselves. There were three major storylines which were moved along and it was just a very enticing week. Best in a long time. I mean, I think I've spoken to you off air before and there has been a kind of like a smuttering on social media that something seems to be happening behind the scenes, maybe, that seems like the show seems to have changed a little bit. I, I feel like it's notably different to how it's been it's the run up to September isn't it leading up to this week but do you think that's what it is then it's because yeah, it's the big it's the big yeah I, I think that's all it is the thing is let's just address that because I know what you're I know what you're um <laughs> alluding to here and it's the fact that you know it's because I've seen people online going oh John Sen can't be very involved with these storylines because it's been really good recently that's not how stuff works though <laughs> like, it isn't like you can't just say that you know, John Sen only does the bad stuff and clearly Kate Oates is more involved at the moment. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just not how it works. You know, John Sen must be, is involved in these as well. You know, he, he can do as good stuff as well as bad stuff, just like any producer can. Um, I think it's literally just that they're now building up to September when they're expecting more viewers to be watching. Um, you know, we've got, yeah, and mm. now, especially with Janine really, coming. We start the run up to, yeah, we and we start the run up to Christmas now, don't we? From September onwards, it's where they start really building yeah. up to the big old Christmas duff duffs and turkeys thrown, please. Um, so I think that's all it is, basically. So there we go. So that was this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you want to get in touch with us or just want to get involved on the show, Rob is now going to tell you how you can do so. You can contact us on Twitter and Instagram at Wolford Weekly. You can find us on Facebook at Wolford Weekly Podcast. On YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications about our spoiler videos. And you can listen to us on Apple, Podbean, Spotify or any, frankly, of your favourite podcast sites. You can email us at robwolfordweekly at gmail.com or alexwolfordweekly at gmail.com. Please feel free to use those email address like Jeff did. Today, he explained to me all about Amazon lockers. I got a really detailed explanation about what Amazon lockers are for, what their purpose is, and now I understand them. That's all I need sometimes, just an education. So feel free, please, if you feel that we don't know about something, let us know. That's how we learn. Um, And we will be back same time, same place next week. Uh, Until then, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Goodbye. See you next week. Bye. Bye.